Communion is amazing. And it's not just the healing table, because it is. But almost all the time, we interpret everything we do for what we get out of him. What about blood for blood, body for body? What about covenant? What about your body for my body, your blood for mine? My life's not my own. Teach me to love not my own life unto death. I give myself to you. And as you lay down your life, I'm excited to lay down mine. As you shed your blood, I'm excited to give mine. Nobody owes me a thing because it was Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom and your love. It's still the forgiveness of sins. It's still the beating and bruising of his body and the chastisement for our peace. It's still all those truths. And you can grow in all those truths. But what about covenant? Isn't this the sign of covenant? Why do we get always tricked into God's end of the covenant towards us? And what we get from him now that he came. Here's the clearest definition of covenant that I know. At lunch, you can help me if you have a, a, a clearer one, because I would appreciate it. But this is the clearest one I know. All that is mine is yours, and all that is yours is mine. Two becoming one. I give myself to you. I went to a women's ministry. We received communion. It was a recovery program, and we did it like a wedding ceremony. And I spoke the promises of God over their life as they took the bread and the cup. And it was like they were getting married. They were, oh, it was off the hook, ridiculous. The Lord said, I want you to bring this into a place of giving themselves back to me. And it was the most life-giving thing because it broke every selfish tendency and reason to be dismayed. Are you with me? So let's do this. There's a table here. There's a table there. There's a table back there. Can we just make our way as quickly as possible don't hug too many people, even though you're in church. Just, just make your way. Grab the bread, grab the cup, and find your way back to your seats. Let's do this. Let's do this before the Lord and let it be a holy thing, a sincere thing. And you're the steward of your heart, so make sure you do this from the heart. Because you do yourself injustice when you do things shallow or on the surface, because you know you did it on the surface. That's why you don't see good things when you look in the mirror. Yeah, you need to learn to love yourself like he loves you. And do yourself justice. Amen? Amen. It's good to see you, buddy. <laughs> um, I have a question. So I, I haven't been baptized in a while right now. Um, so. Yeah, you just need to make it happen. Or do you come here? No, I came from Georgia. Okay. Yeah. You, you just got to get, 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 do you have a pastor at home, like a church? Here's what I don't want you to think, it has, don't have to be me. Okay? We're going to do this with a motive that I feel like we're directed to this morning through the message. Why they're getting their, uh, their elements, the communion elements, I want you to know that there was a season in my life where the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit asked me to receive communion every day. And he was, said he was going to teach me through the word I was reading the power of these elements. So for every day, I would take the bread and cup when I woke up. And I did it for a long time. And it got so big in me 
the power of what he did through his body, the power of what he did through his blood, that it was probably 45 minutes in and I still didn't even take the bread yet because I was just so growing in the accomplishment of his flesh. The way in 1 John 4, 1, that you discern if a spirit's not of the Lord is if he denies that Jesus came in the flesh. You think it would be if he denies that he's Lord. No, he denied that Jesus came in the flesh because the devil doesn't want you and I to know what he accomplished by coming in the flesh. And this is a great thing. When I did the Kingdom Living School, the Lord said, I want you to receive communion on every Monday, the beginning of the week. We did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for 13 weeks, three hours a day. They put the whole thing, it's all on YouTube. Every Monday we received communion to start the week. And here's what the Lord told me. He said, Dan, my people are lacking intimacy with me. Not that they don't desire intimacy. They don't know where to go with it. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to be when they're alone with me. That's what he told me. A lot of that self-consciousness, not feeling good about yourself, feeling a little unworthy. Now you take 20 minutes to get past yourself to get to him. Bummer. He said, use the communion elements as a tool to trigger their hearts and to spring them into intimacy. And I went, oh my goodness. So that's how we taught communion in Kingdom Living School other than you know other aspects of what the communion represents. But we used it as a springboard to intimacy. Picture this. You waking up in the morning in your home and you're just grabbing the elements off your counter and you just have them right there. And you just grab it and in your kitchen, Father, thank you for loving me. Do you know how many people aren't talking like that to God? Thank you that you value me. Lord Jesus, that you would give your life, your body, that you would hang on the cross when I was yet a sinner to forgive me and love me, to live inside of me. This is amazing. I thank you for loving me. And you can get real with God if this is where you've been. For years, I've been insecure. For years, I've needed people to say the right things. Those years are over. They're behind me. A new day's come, new life's come, the way's come. And I thank you, and the more you pray, you say, Dan, I can't pray that way, that sounds so fluent. I've been in fellowship with God for 23 years. Don't try to pray like I pray. I have fellowship and communion with God. So it's, I'm, I'm real at home with him. That makes some people mad. They think, well, that's not respectful. Are you kidding? I'm to come boldly into his presence. The more you do it, the more your heart builds language and understanding and the more grace creates knowing. All of a sudden, you know he loves you. Man, it's one thing to theologically believe he loves you because of the fact of the cross. It's another thing to let that truth through your relationship and communion get branded in your heart to where you know he loves you. I mean, know he loves you. We've come to know and believe the love he has for us. Yeah? yeah? To know you're valuable. To know you're indispensable. That the same price tag was on your head that's on any ever, anybody else's head. You're not higher. You're not lower. We're all in the same plane. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. He comes one blood, one sacrifice for all men. That's because we all have the same value to live for his image. It's not about your gifting and calling. It's about his image. It's about walking in the light. You don't find your identity through your gifting and calling. Let's stop making people heroes. No one has a thing unless it's been given. The things we can thank, thank you for your time spent with Jesus. Obviously, brother, I can tell you've spent a lot of time in the Word. Man, I appreciate the relationship you've cultivated with the Lord and how it's impacted your life. It's really impacted mine. I can receive that. I understand that. But if he didn't open this door, there'd be nothing to go through. And if he didn't have grace, I wouldn't be empowered. He started this thing. He'll finish this thing. Keep your eyes on him. Yeah? Yeah? So take your communion elements if you have them. I better get mine. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to be cut off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look, you could be sitting, you could be sitting woofing down a bowl of cereal. Don't get offended at me with this. Don't get religious on me. Don't, don't shift gears on me. You could just be, you could just be eating a bowl of cereal, woofing down, running late for work. 
and you're kind of hurrying and all of a sudden you think of the cross and you think, man, I didn't even slow down. I didn't even have a heart to heart with the Father. I've been so busy. I woke up late. Oh my gosh, I've been just running. If I don't slow down, I'm going to just drive today. I'm probably going to walk into work and seem stressed. Oh my goodness. And you're there and you just pull the Cheerio right off the spoon and just snap the thing right there at the table. Because he said as often as, he didn't say as often as Pastor Matt leads it, you take it. He said as often as you do. I'll tell you, there's one thing. This is my personal pastoral opinion, Pastor Matt, that the biggest thing lacking in our lives isn't sincerity. It's personal spending time when nobody's looking intimacy with the Father. I think our hearts are right. I just don't think we let that right heart guide us to the right place. And we need to cultivate something with Him to where we know Him, where we're alone and we feel good being alone. And we feel good being with one another. Uh, we ain't afraid of the dark and we ain't afraid of being alone and if my spouse has to leave for three weeks what am I going to do what do you mean what am I going to do yeah you shut me in a room with no pictures no windows no tv no computer no phone you just shut the door put a little bedpan in there for me <laughs> and if you're only going to leave me in there three days you don't even have to put food or water just put me in the room shut the door with nothing better be ready when you open it because I ain't going to come staggering out there oh man I'm so glad you came to get me out of here I was I was bouncing off the walls maybe literally <laughs> why because he taught me how to be with him and to believe what he thinks about me through his son so it's not presumptuous I'm not running the risk of being presumptuous Everything that I believe he taught me through his son, through the cross. I love you, Dan. On your darkest day, I didn't lose sight of you. You have destiny, you have purpose, you have value. And I paid the price of my son for you to be my son. I've loved you from the beginning. You're only here because I said so, because life comes from me. There's a time to be born. Are you not here? You came from me. Call no man on earth your father. You have one father, and it's me. <laughs> That's pretty good. So you're woofing down the cereal and you break the Cheerio and you say, Father, thank you for loving me. Man, thank you, God, for grace in my life. Thank you for my job. I'm done complaining. I know people have been acting crazy, but I'm not going to let that make me crazy. You're not crazy. You're amazing. You're so sound. You're so stable. You're so amazing. Thank you that everything I see in you is what they'll see in me today. I don't dread my job. I love you. And it gives me a whole different view. I'm done complaining about my boss. I don't need you to knock him off his high horse. Forgive me for praying that last week. What I need to be is a better example to him. And I need to let him start seeing without me trying so hard. Just who you are in me because I have relationship with you. Holy Spirit, have your way in me today. I have this amazing sense that things are going to be good. Wonder if you would start doing that all the time when no one was looking and keep your eyes in that place. What do you think that would turn into? Yeah. Don't be afraid you'll act and look like me. Just be the best you. Because the thing I just explained, it's what's wrong with me. Every time you see me. That right there is what's wrong with me. He's the God of the universe, but he's so intimate and personal that he's lived inside of me for 23 years. He's known my name and allowed me to know his. He's wrapped his arms around me. He's spoken to me in the quiet. He's spoken to me through his word. He has loved me through his son. And I'm ready to give it all back to him. Are you? Would you say yes? Would you say no to animosity in your homes? Would you say no matter how I feel like I've missed it on my job, I've only missed it if I fail to receive change and respond in truth. I've only missed it if I fail to pursue peace from now on in my home. I can't make up for the words I spoke a year ago, a month ago. But man, you can sure do a work in me now. And the words I speak can bring life, not pain. And in time, the one that I hurt with my words will see that you're doing a good thing and hopefully they'll see that their life isn't the thing I spoke when they were so depending on me. 
God, would you bring change? Can we do that today? Can we believe for the redemption of all things and the restoration of all things? But first and foremost, we're given our lives. So when we receive communion, there's healing in this cup. There's a forgiveness of sins and by his stripes we're healed. Right? I get, I get all that. I don't want you to miss that if you want to grab a hold of that. Here's what I don't want you to miss this morning because of the tone that I'm in. You gave your body. I'm giving mine. You gave your blood. I'm giving mine. So can we pray? Can we do it together as a family? Are you ready? If you do this insincere or you just do this because we're doing it, the Bible talks about that. It's not cool. You won't receive the fruit of the truth in your life. It'll actually dull your senses, sear your conscience, and won't produce good fruit. It's not that God goes, you did that insincere. Psst. You hurt yourself when you learn to live plastic because you know you're doing it. And when you look in the mirror, you can't see anything good. And the gospel wants to teach you to look in the mirror and see him. So when you violate your conscience, you shipwreck your faith and it's impossible to please him without it and to just live by it. Probably not a good idea to violate your conscience. Probably to treat it more important than your human heartbeat. Because if your conscience is seared, whether your heart's beating or not, you're living dead. So that's come alive in him. You ready? Father, we just thank you for the, the gospel. We thank you. I, I thank you. I'm honored here. I, I, feel, I feel honored right now. There's a sense of humility on me right now just that I could stand in front of you guys this morning and be here and cheer you on. The way you receive and the way you listen is humbling. So, Father, in expressing that, I just thank you that we're here as a family. <laughs> we're here as a family, and what you did for one, you did for all. And we acknowledge this morning that every one of us, whether we have different callings, different grace in our life for things in ministry, different passions, different visions, different talents, we're all the same in this one truth, that every one of us can wake up every day and live for your image and pursue love. So, Father, we hold up this bread representing the body of your son, Jesus, and we say, Jesus, thank you for giving your life and paying the price to remove our sin and make us right with the Father and seeing us through your own eyes and heart and vision as if we've never sinned and robing us in righteousness and writing our names in a book called life and giving us the garments of salvation. Man, let these never be theological phrases and positional phrases but let them be the realities of our everyday life. Consume us with the love you have for us. Consume us with the truth that comes through your son. We take this bread and we say it, it represents the body of Jesus given. And as we take it today, we're saying in our hearts, your body for our lives. We want to know truly, Holy Spirit, what it means to love not our own life unto death. Teach us in every situation and opportunity. We want to know what it means to not think for ourselves without being legalists and condemned. Would you teach us the very grace of life so that we can live as free as we see you, so that men see that freedom and see that you're good. Let our lives become desirable to the onlooker. Let our lives be desirable to the world. So as we take this bread, as best we understand, we're laying down our lives afresh. We're peacemakers. We walk in forgiveness. We show mercy, and we're asking you to help us every day. And if in any way we show something else, speak to us quickly, because it's not about failing. It's about becoming. And I won't get condemned. I will run to you and find grace and be empowered. You pray from your heart if you're sincere and you tell the Lord, your body for my body, teach me how to walk in love. You pray that to him before you put that bread in your mouth from your own heart. And when you pray that and you're satisfied with your expression, you pop that in your mouth by faith to seal the deal. In Jesus' name. Mm. <laughs> 
Take the cup. We're done in a, just a couple minutes. Lord Jesus, you shed your blood. Your blood is amazing. It was holy, spotless blood. You were the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. You were raised from the dead by the spirit of holiness, according to the spirit of holiness, Romans 4. It's amazing. A holy lamb, holy blood, a holy God, an amazing unbreakable covenant through your blood. We enter into fellowship with this covenant, God, that you made through your son. And as we hold these cups that represent the blood of your son, we say blood for blood. We are laying down our lives. As you forgave us, we want to forgive others. As you made peace with us, we want to become peacemakers. As we drink this cup, we're saying we're all in, spirit, soul, and body. And we're asking your grace in our lives to father us and steward us into a life that looks like you. We thank you for it. Wow. Here's what I hear to just do when you take this cup. You tell the Lord if you're serious that you're saying goodbye today and ending the right to offense, discouragement, disappointment, or anything that rings a bell in your heart. All those things that have never produced life. You list them, you name them, you whisper them out, you say them in your heart. But before you take this cup, body for body, blood for blood, I'm all in. Go ahead right now. You tell God what you're surrendering and you tell the Lord that you're trusting his grace to make the difference, but your heart's willing and you're ready to run. And it's not about failing, it's about becoming. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Can you stand to your feet with me, please? Thanks for this morning. You, go, you want me to just close, Pastor, complete close? Or do you have anything? Or Okay. Here's what I want to say before I... I'm going to let Pastor pray over us. You'll do that? And he has a couple of remarks. Listen, thanks for coming. Thanks for letting me come. There's a lot of you. A lot of people want to say hey and stuff. Please don't just rush me for prayer and all that stuff. I'm one guy. There's hundreds of you. I'm not your answer. They have order teams. They have order ministries. If you need prayer, please go to them. Don't think, well, I want Dan to pray for me. Stop. Don't make an idol out of people's revelation or gifting or relationship. Be inspired by it to go become it. Okay? All weekend, the whole power and love, all week, the whole purpose was to empower everybody to run in the same thing that we see in Jesus. Amen? Okay. So just honor that. Learn to honor one another that way. And I appreciate your love. I don't mind that you guys are excited and want to say hi to me. I appreciate your testimonies. A lot of you have made me cry this week with some amazing testimonies of life change. People coming up saying, take a good look at me. My marriage wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for this revelation. And they'll cry and walk away. And I'm like, oh. Lift your hands with me, would you? Father, we thank you for your great unfailing love. We put our confidence in this fact that the way you love us today is the way you'll love us every day for the rest of our lives. You don't change. None of this will change. So thanks for the grace that we would never change except to grow up into you in more things. In everything that you are. The full measure of the stature of Christ. Father, I thank you for blessing your people with truth, with revelation, with grace and empowerment. And I thank you that today looks a little bit different and a little bit more like you than it would have if we wouldn't have come. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Love you guys. So good to see you.